All right, guys, we're back. Um, I'm gonna do a video on uh, Ruby here. It's 88 coupe. Used to be white, uh, four cylinder car. And um, I bought it as a daily driver, uh, believe it or not, back in I think the beginning of 2016. And um, after the automatic transmission and its stock behind the four cylinder went out, I don't know, probably eight months later, I uh, changed it over to five speed. Uh, and then soon thereafter, I decided to just restore the car as a project. So it's kind of an homage to my late father. Um, my dad, uh, he had a 1980 coupe uh, that was red. Um, and that was i think it was his very first brand new vehicle so um you know this car is kind of an homage to him it's kind of a combination of what he would have liked to have seen plus you know what i like currently so it's kind of a collaboration of ideas but uh the color code on this car is code rr which is the new ruby red well it's not too new i think it's everything came on your f-150s raptors mustangs uh, from I think 2015 and on um, it's a three-stage paint and uh, they did pretty uh, good with it um, it took a while to get my car back not gonna lie but uh, it was worth it uh, starting off got a Cervini's Cobra R hood um, these Cervini's hoods are really good guys they are a little pricey but they're definitely worth it uh, minimal prep work from what the body shop told me and the fit is pretty much second to none um, same thing with the smoked headlights um, the wheels are Autohan DS 05s and they're the same size as what's on the hatch 18 by eight and a half with a 30 five millimeter uh, offset on the front along with the factory Cobra brakes Cobra caliper you know the calipers and uh, aftermarket cross drilled and vented rotors and then the rear are 18 by nine and a half wheels with the Mickey Thompson ET Street SS's 285 40 18 tire um, same thing, factory Ford Cobra calipers in the rear. Um, so this car has Cobra brakes throughout, which is going to be the upgrade for the hatch, as I've stated in my other videos, which actually, let's just give her some love too, even though she has her own video. Um, so the Cobra brakes that are identical to what's on the coupe are going to go on the hatch. So... But back to the coupe, um, so yeah, ruby red metallic, three-stage paint, Cervini's hood, smoked headlights. Um, I'm gonna go around the car a little bit so you can see better. And same tint, I think it's 25% or 30%. Uh, Matico nano ceramic tint. The quarter windows right here, um, believe it or not, are new old stock. They were brand new in the box from Ford Carlite when I originally bought them from a gentleman out of state. And, um, you know, we all know how bad the rubber deteriorates on these windows. So what I did preemptively was take a preemptive measure to protect the rubber before um it deteriorates you know why well, have a brand new paint job brand new you know car in essence and uh put a window on that's going to deteriorate so i did my own set of proprietary coatings on the trim so i brought it to a matte finish with some clear coat techniques and whatnot but anyway the rubber is sealed so not going to have an issue at any point in the future so did that before I installed them and of course tinted them and whatnot. Um, let's go around the back. Same idea guys, the tent. 
Um, fuel system is the same idea as well. Just like the hatch, have the sump tank. Go into an Aeromotive 1000 pump, 8 a.m. feed, 6 a.m. return. So just a little better shot. Yeah, guys, this project took about, I'd say, three years to complete. The majority of it was waiting on the paint and body shop. Um, but uh, interior was actually blue. Uh, you know, it was white over blue, white exterior with a blue interior. And just like the hatch, um, with some dyeing techniques on the dash and the center console, and I think some steering parts, uh, kick panels and whatnot, um, I brought it back to the pretty close to the original gray color and black throughout or the Landau black from SEM and also like the hatch, you know, have the uh, LMR console and I did the uh, USB upgrade for dual USB ports um, LED cluster lights in the bezel stock cluster unit uh, The door panels are factory gray those are not dyed, you know, but original door handles that have been restored. Um, I restored them, you know, obviously with the dyeing and also the silver metal stripe between the pad and the rest itself. All in here. So I restored these armrests. Um, brand new switches, brand new bezels, door handle, all that stuff. It's all new. And um, same thing as before on the hatch. Under the carpet, um, I have uh, kill mat, uh, 80 mil sound deadening. Um, so again, highly recommended. Um, it dampens down the sound effects coming from the motor. Um, the seats are pretty good condition. I got these, uh, I think in South Georgia. These are original 89 seats, so they kind of match the year range. Um, they're in very good condition. A little better than I expected when I picked them up. Are they perfect? No. But uh, probably the best I could find. So, um, but yeah, that's the interior. I have a rear seat delete. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the interior, guys. Don't have too, too much bling for the interior, but that's kind of the way I like them, nice and stock looking. And uh, we'll go around, pop the hood, and um, show you the business end of things. Same thing as the hatch. Well, not same thing, but same idea. Pillar gauges, got the MTXL uh, Innovate Motorsports wideband air fuel ratio meter and the Autometer Sport Comp 2 boost gauge. So that gives you a hint of what's under the hood. The gauges on the outside are um, Sport Comp 2 Autometer water temp, oil pressure, and fuel pressure gauges. Um, so these have a triple two and a sixteenth gauge uh, pod for the vent. Same company, I think it's uh, Cal Gauge Concepts. They make a pretty nice piece. So um, let's see what's uh, under the hood of this car. So obviously there's a boost gauge. So that should give you a clue. So what we have here, guys, is a dark block based 363 cubic inch, which is a 4125 bore, 3.4 inch stroke, with a Paxton Navi 2000 10 rib belt setup, with the Renegade brackets. I had the brackets powder coated at a powder coating shop I like to use, Miller's Powder uh, Coating in Lilburn, Georgia. 
little tight on clearance, but everything fits nice and snug. I had to make this uh, conical air filter cover. Um, it's just something I wasn't going to, uh, something that wasn't enticing me too much was to drill a hole in brand new Scott Rod fab panels that have been nicely painted to cover the mass air. So, you know, to hide it. So I figured I'd just do that instead and uh, works like a champ, looks decent. Um, but uh, yeah, guys, Scott Rob fab panels, um, AC, heat, all the creature comforts, BBK, one and three quarter ceramic coated long tubes. Um, they were ceramic coated also by Miller's Powder Coating in uh, Lawrenceville. And um, stock OEM 86 to 93 valve covers that have also been powder coated. Uh, black wrinkle to match the trick flow TFSR intake. Injector size are 71 pound per hour injectors. Um, I think they're uh, RC injectors. So um, they definitely flow the fuel that it needs. Um, again, the Airmotive 1000, 8 AN feed. So there's a feed line going into the rail. Um, see what else here? Got the blow off valve underneath the elbow. Um, so yeah, guys, air conditioning, condenser, all that good stuff. Same radiator, same fan setup. which is the Griffin Dominator series. Uh, 00165 radiator with uh, factory Ford contour fans with a Delta current control module to control the fans. And if you haven't seen my other video for the hatch, the Delta controller that's mounted on the radiator or on the fan shroud, excuse me, uh, it's a pulse width modulator. So it's not like your other standard dual relay setup that triggers the fans to come on and off and shock loading the electrical system. What this will do is progressively bring the fans uh, up to speed and out of speed, uh, depending on what you set the thermocouple to trigger the module at. So very nice unit. You'll see the fans slowly ramp up and slowly ramp down so it doesn't shock the, the alternator and the electrical system. Um, Module costs about the same as what you would get a dual controller for so to me it was a no-brainer But yeah guys, this is it transmission is again uh, early gen TKO um, 26 spline in 31 spline out um, center force dual friction clutch um, Rear end 31 spline c-clip axles um, 31 spline factory Ford carrier from an Explorer, limited slip, new clutch packs. Suspension wise, um, Maximum Motorsports upper and lower control arms. Um, non adjustable stock saw replacement with the urethane bushings, except for the rear end housing. The upper ears have the spherical bushings that I replaced. Um, of course, the torque boxes have been upgraded. Um, you know, the Wild Rides Battle Boxes, both the coupe and the hatch have the same thing done. Um, subframe connectors. Um, one thing we'll do is we'll go back to this motor. Let me uh, explain um, what this motor has in it from the ground up. So obviously it's a Dart block. Um, the hardware that came from Dart uh, are stock main bolts, which are really good bolts, uh, but I decided to upgrade to ARP main studs for the Dart SHP 8.2 deck. So I had it line honed, um, have a SCAT 4340 forged uh, crank, dual keyed for the dual keyed balancer, which is really what you guys want to do for a blower setup. You really want to, uh, not only is it double keyed, but the actual diameter of the balancer snout where it slides onto the crank is actually a lot bigger diameter uh, you know for extra tension from the belt from the blower belt um, so yeah H-beam rods um, ARP 2000 rod bolts 
Pistons are SRP. Um, I think they were somewhere around 10 or 12 cc dish. I can't remember exactly. Uh, total seal gapless piston rings, as I normally use, gapless tops. Uh, the max seal set. Um, the cam is an Anderson B41HR high rev hydraulic roller cam. Um, lifters are the same Howard's 91168. Uh, link bar hydraulic roller lifters made in USA. Um, push rods are custom length for perfect sweep on the valve tip. Uh, chromoly hardened 80,000th wall push rods. Rockers are the Scorpion 1.6 Endura Race. Uh, the blue roller rockers with a 716th stud. Uh, the heads are AFR 195 Renegade CC heads. Um, I think it has a 205 intake and a 160 exhaust valve. It might be 208, I can't remember. Um, so yeah, guys, it's a pretty stout, stout build. Um, but it's very streetable, so it's all in the tune, guys. Um, so you can pretty much drive anything as long as you uh, tune it properly. You can tame a lot of what's out there. Um, like I said uh, earlier, we have the Cobra brakes. Now this car, uh, the booster, master cylinder, and all that stuff I installed before the motor went in and before, uh, yeah. So um, that was installed. The, the only thing I had to do was massage the back of the strut tower, but that was before I sent it off for paint. So all all that massaging uh you know it paid off in the end because when i got it back from paint obviously it was ready to go master or the uh, booster went right in no problem so um trying to think of what else guys um it's pretty much it the caster camber plates give a lot of adjustability they're the lmr version i like these because they sit a little lower um i see some of the other kits the uh the post comes up pretty high um, not sure why, but uh, anyways, that's the ones I used. And, um, so yeah, guys, there you go. Dart 363 cubic inch with a Paxton Navi 2000 blower. Um, I have the, uh, eight inch diameter crank pulley for the blower set up anyway, uh, for the blower belt. And the blower pulley is a three and a half diameter so it puts me right at peak spin on the blower at about 6500 rpm um so which is pretty much where you want to be um but yeah guys stock distributor uh obviously it's been remanned put a i put a brand new uh du30 motorcraft pickup in it um all my electronics between the coupe and the hatch everything e so there's one thing I can't stress enough, guys, when you're doing these cars, and this just kind of entered my head. That's why I'm kind of going to go off on a little bit of a rant. But when it comes to electronics, all right, I'm sure a lot of you guys have already seen for yourselves and learned the hard way. Definitely go with Ford Motorcraft, Factory Ford, OEM Electronics. If you can find them new, like new old stock online, or if there's a vendor you guys can go through, definitely use those. You know, the only electronic item that is not Ford on this car I believe is the mass air meter um, and I think the air charge temp sensor uh, I couldn't find a motorcraft air charge temp sensor I don't really use it in the tune um, but uh, but everything else is motorcraft it's either brand new or um, yeah it's a new old stock either with or without the box but either way the TFI module, um, I'll give you guys a clear cut example. The idle air bypass valve that you see on uh, hanging on the throttle body, I used to have just a general part store valve. And when I was tuning the car, I was uh, trying to tune the dash pot correctly. And if you guys don't know what dash pot is, that's when you're when you're cruising down the road, let's say you're at 2,500 RPMs, you want to declutch and you want the motor to coast down to a nice idle. Dash pot is the function in the computer which controls that valve and dictates how it's going to move uh, to slowly coast the engine down. All right. 
So um, I was having a really hard time getting my dash pot dialed in. I mean, I would do everything from pre-position to decay rate. I'm going a little too technical here, but um, I just decided to upgrade to a factory Ford, brand new in the box, Ford Motorcraft valve. Guys, all my problems went away after that. It's amazing what the difference was. So same thing, fuel pump relays, uh, computer relays, all that stuff is all Ford both the hatch and the coupe um so I'm trying to think of what else guys it's pretty much it um if you have any questions give me a shout powered by ford 306 at yahoo.com and uh now that it's uh getting to be warmer out there and um things are opening back up i look forward to seeing you guys at a uh at a car show soon definitely in the Atlanta area. I try to make as many as I can. Um, so yeah, but thanks for watching guys. Again, uh, the next project that, uh, that I'm going to tackle is putting that Dart 427 in the hatch. So, um, stay tuned for that and also the brakes. So, well, thanks for watching and, uh, we'll see you next time.